Today is Wednesday, April 20th, 2022, and welcome to the Benjamin Dixon Morning Show. We are broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, as well as Act TV. Good morning to our partners over at Act TV, where they encourage you to do more than watch. They want you to act. As always, I'm joined by our dear friend and brother and historian. He may not consider himself to be an historian, but he is most certainly our historian, Dr. Carl Mack. Good morning to you, brother. Good morning, my brother. How you doing? I'm doing good now that we're able to fly. I had a couple of technical difficulties, but we are here. And while we have these last few minutes before we shift into on the clock with Georgia Fort, I wanted to take this time to do what we always do. We ground this show in black history. Uh, so what happened today in black history? April 20th, 1908, vibraphone legend Lionel Leo Hampton was born. Hampton was a leading light of the jazz world, noted for his performances on the vibraphone. Hampton began playing the drums at age 10 while working as a newsboy. As a vibraphone player he toured Europe and Australia and earned the title King of the Vibes. Hampton went on to fight for affordable housing in Harlem and was honored by four United States presidents. Adapted from Black Heritage Day calendar by author, lecturer and civil rights activist Dr. Carl Mack. And Dr. Mack, this is in Black Heritage Days 4, and they can get that at blackheritagedays.com, correct? Correct. And um, we're encouraging everyone to root their mornings in Black history. Uh, Dr. Mack, there's so much that's going on around the world. We're going to be joined by Georgia Fort momentarily for On the Clock. I, I, I do want to bring our attention to the video that has gone um, super viral. Um, and I do want to caution everyone before we even play the video or the portions of the video. I think it is really necessary for us to see it. It is a video of Syracuse, New York police um, manhandling, accosting and all out assaulting what turns out to be an eight year old boy. And as we watch the video, the officers involved make it clear that they are doing this because he stole a bag of potato chips something that probably cost less than a dollar. And for something less than a dollar, they treated this young boy um, like he was an animal. Um, now, I had an opportunity to call the Syracuse Police Department yesterday to ask them about this, and it took forever to get through. And once I did actually get through, they of course deflected, but said that they are investigating and that those officers were still on the street. That was as of yesterday. Um, and this is from me calling them directly, because once you see this video and hear it, you will understand why everyone needs to be involved. Let's take a listen in. Content warning. What are y'all doing? What is y'all doing? Guess. Take a guess what I'm doing. Hey, he look like a baby to me. Why are you? Why are you? Guess what I'm doing. I don't know what you're doing. Exactly. You I just see you snatch him up off the... So what? So what's going on then? He's stealing stuff. If he breaks into your house, he steals something. Nah, you man. What are you saying? A bag of chips? So y'all treat me like a whole cold-blooded fucking killer? Keep, keep walking, dude. You don't even know what you're keep talking about. Keep walking. I do. I, I know what I just came up and see. I know the fuck I just came up and see. Okay, what did you see? I see y'all snatching him off a bike like you're a fucking grown-ass man. It wasn't him. And he said it wasn't him. What is y'all doing? That's crazy. How old is it? Ten years fuck old? is y'all talking about, that's man? Against, that's against the law. What the fuck is y'all doing? Sword, what is y'all doing? Take the fucking chips. If you stole some chips, I'll pay for them. I'll pay for them. You don't even know where he lived. Y'all just throwing him in the fucking car. That's what they do. They come here. What the fuck is y'all doing? Bro. Leave him alone. No camera. Mm. Now, again, this is an eight year old boy being stopped. If originally, the report said that he was 12 years old, um, but he is an eight year old boy. And the police have, um, Dr. Mack said that they are investigating. I don't have a lot of confidence in the investigatory powers of policing agencies because after everything that we've seen over the past two years alone, they still go out there and do this to an eight-year-old boy over a bag of damn chips. You know, Ben, there should be no, no doubt in anybody's mind why we in the African-American community have such a disdain for law enforcement. It is this type of behavior that we've seen time and time again. You know, as I'm sitting here watching it, you know, I'm trying to put myself in, in the shoes of the brother who uh, is videotaping it and, and voicing his concern. And, you know, being all I could, could think of is, you know, 
if I were there and I certainly had, a, a, you know, at least three or four of us, I got to believe that it had been hard pressed for me to stand there and watch that. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. You know, somewhere. this is not this is not toxic masculinity. This is nothing that we don't have. I, I don't I know I try not to interrupt Dr. Mack, but I feel that same primal rage because we have no requirement as human beings to allow these pigs to do this to our children. Please continue. Thugs, thugs, you know, and again, you know, the brother made the, you know, the brother made this, this statement, Ben, you know, he said, look, man, if it's a bag of chips, I'll pay for it. I don't I don't have words for that type of behavior. You know, well, I, I do. I do. I think oh, we all do. And and again, I'll say it over and over again. It is hard pressed for us in our community. If law enforcement ever wants to know why we have just such an outright just disdain for the for, for that profession. You, you're absolutely watching it right now. I mean, think about how many other ways it could have been handled. Ben. I mean, it could have been a teachable moment. Could have been all sorts of things that could have been far more positive than that. But you got nothing but, I mean, like a pack of wolves, just thugs. And by the quintessential definition of, of the word thug, that is exactly what they are. Just, you know, it, it, it's the most legalized, notorious gang in America. You know, Dr. Mack, I am, I wonder, if anyone honestly believes that we as a sentient species, black folks with the same cognitive prowess and even more some, I wonder if they actually believe that we should submit to this type of treatment that goes on in the black community every single day. It goes on in black schools. I was a teacher in Duval County. And I had to go and report to the police. I don't know why, because they didn't do anything about it, but report to the police on a police officer who slapped the student at school, right? We see this kind of trauma happening in black communities every single day, multiple times a day, oftentimes leading to the death of individuals. And yet we live in a society that honestly thinks that there's something wrong with our analysis. And if we get upset about it, then we are the angry black men or the angry black women. So be it. So, so be it, you know, he who defines rules. It's just that we don't accept that definition, you know, to that point of this being primal. You know, I don't know of a species that can stand by and allow this type of abuse of our children. And Ben, you know, I'll tell you, again, when I was in them streets in Seattle as, uh, as, as chief servant of the Seattle King County branch of NAACP, then I can tell you right now, um, they absolutely understood what my mindset was. You know, the day that they saw me walk out there and shut a freeway down, mm. the disdain I had for them, I, I, I'll never forget then. And I, I, I could remember it like yesterday when there was a store that, that made this board game, Ghettoopoly, which which was an absolutely horrific game. They, they had crack cocaine as game pieces. It was, it was like the, the Monopoly board. And there was a cop that, that had a known reputation uh, for, for doing nonsense in our community. And, and this, of course, that nonsense was taking place before we stepped in. But I remember he was at the store. And, and so in order for us not to be uh, uh, charged with, with block, blocking the, the sidewalk, we, we had to keep moving. But they didn't say how fast we had to move. <laughs> then I can remember walking past him as slow as I could possibly could walk. I mean, within inches of his face, just screaming, you know, whatever our chant was. And I was just, pr I was praying God that he would, he would just reach out and do anything. I, it, it was a pre-program in my mind that he and I were going through that, that glass window without That's question. Right. I can remember it like yesterday. Yeah. And that was the part that was in me. So, mm. so there's a part, and, and I can even remember some more nefarious thoughts that I had. Well, we're gonna hold those, hold, hold, hold those for after this quick break. We're gonna take, I know we just got on air, but we're gonna shift gears. I wanna bring Georgia Ford into the conversation on the clock. So let's take a quick breather. DJ Exclusive is in the house. We'll come right back on the clock with Georgia Ford. We'll be back after this.